Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Ryan, as always. Well, welcome all of you. I want to welcome those of you in person. I want to welcome those of you joining us on our, our stream. Wherever you are worshiping with us this day, we are glad you are with us. So let me start with a few announcements in your bulletin. is a much longer list of them. I invite you to read through those. Uh, but just very quickly, um, our women's Bible study is continuing on. Um, it's on Tuesdays at 7. Um, Fly High is taking a break. And then the prayer breakfast is this Thursday, this Thursday at 7 a.m. So if you've never been to a prayer breakfast, come on by. We'd love to have you. We have a very simple meal. We have uh, lots and lots of prayers. We do a simple devotion, and we end with, um, with communion. So come join us. Our senior ministry is this Tuesday at 11 a.m. in the Discovery Zone. So come join us for that. Um, our highway cleanup, um, as we are doing uh, caring for our world and our environment, our highway cleanup is on Saturday, June 15th at 9 a.m. Um, so gather at Aldi's. The gathering will be at Aldi's. Get you organized. The stretch of road that um, our congregation is responsible for is on Highway 10 as you're heading east um, out of town. And uh, if you'd like to be a part of it, there's a clipboard on the Welcome Center table. Please just sign up so we have a sense of who's coming, so we know how to organize this. So that will be Saturday, June 15th at 9 a.m. Church camp, of course, coming up at the end of the month for ages 8 to, 7, 8 to, 8 to 17. It, the video is running in the gathering area, giving you more information about it. Please sign up. Please invite others. Um, be a part of it. As we begin the month of June, our loose coin offering changes for the month of June will be supporting Project Fresh Clothes, which is a ministry of our church that provides clothing for children um, as they're getting ready for school or throughout the year. And so if you'd like to support this ministry that we do, um, that is any loose coin or loose loose paper money. (laughs) But if you put in an envelope, please mark the envelope. Um, for Project Fresh Clothes or Loose Coin Offering, then our counters kind of know where where it goes. That helps them out a lot. Um, And then just remember our children and youth discipleship every Sunday with our our chapel time. If you'd like to be a part of that and help out with that, come talk with me or talk with Laura. I do invite you to read through the rest of the announcements that are in your bulletin. They're all really important. But I do want to welcome all of you. So if you're online, I invite you to use the comment section to say good morning to those that are with you. And for those in the sanctuary, turn to a neighbor, turn to someone across, give them a handshake, a smile, a good morning. Let them know you're happy to see them. Let's come as people of God, ready to hear, ready to be inspired, ready to be transformed. As we let the Holy Spirit break forth into our hearts and our lives as we come and as we worship. Our liturgist for this morning is Heather. So I want to invite you all to stand for our responsive call to worship. Remain standing as we sing our opening hymn. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. When we call upon the Lord, God comes to us to save us. God's amazing love endures forever. When our hearts are troubled, God comes to us with blessings. God's extravagant love endures forever. When our spirits struggle and are discouraged, God comes to us with healing. God's generous love endures forever. When our lives are overwhelmed, God comes as a courageous spirit. God's forgiving love endures forever. Please join in singing hymn 454, Open My Eyes That I May See. Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me place in my hands a wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free silently now i wait for thee ready my god thy will to see open
traces of truth of sin is clear. And while the wave notes fall on my ear, everything false will disappear. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my ears, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my mouth and let me bear, gladly the one truth may be seated as we continue our worship with the reading of scripture. Our scripture lesson this morning is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 5 through 12. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said light will shine out of darkness who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in clay jars, so that it may, may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying around in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For we who are living are always being handed over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Our gospel lesson this morning is from the Gospel of Mark, the second chapter. Hear these words. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are you doing that which is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Have you not read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? How he entered the house of God when Abiathar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat? But he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, the Sabbath was made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. May God add a blessing to our hearing and our living out of the word this day. Amen. It is our young disciples time. Uh, Laura's leading it this day. So young disciples, come on down for our young disciples time. Morning, come on down. Got a seat right here, right here, right here in front of me. Awesome. Awesome, right here in front of me. Yes, yes. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> right in front. I'm so glad to see you all this morning. And I welcome all of you that are online as well. So this morning, I brought a couple things to help me share this message. So what have I got? A light bulb. A light bulb. Oh, yeah, sometimes we see this as a symbol for an idea. Yeah, so what can you tell me besides that? What? And for light. For light. What, what, so tell me about this light bulb. Light. Use it for light. It's can a bulb. You, it's a bulb. And, you just, and it produces light. And I don't know if you've seen 
Light. Yeah, so energy and produces light. You know what? It can't produce light unless it's connected to some sort of energy. Oh, okay, know. like it needs a power source, right? Yes. Sometimes it can go on a lamp. It goes on a lamp. Anything else? It can go it's on a bathroom like that they're like sometimes when like a lamp or no light. There's a different kind like LED ones. Yeah, there's yeah, different kinds of them. Some are pretty warm when you touch them, right? Anything else? Yeah, sometimes I have hot places. Yeah, they can be kind of hot when you touch them. So, so there's a lot of different things that we know about a light bulb. So let me ask you, is this the only kind of light bulb you've seen? No. No. What are other kind of light bulbs that you've seen? I mentioned an LED bulb. An LED it has bulb? Them, but it has like a yeah. LED. Yeah, I think this might be an LED bulb. No, it has like, you can see. Oh, you can see it a little different? Okay, okay. Like some might be smaller than that one. Yeah, they're, yeah, different shapes, longer, thinner, bigger, yeah. And sometimes it might not just look clear, sometimes it might have like a little bit of a shield. Yeah, different shapes, Chloe. Smaller could be big or smaller. Sometimes yes. brighter. Sometimes, like when you turn it off, it goes off, and you turn it on, it goes on. Yeah, on and off. Have you ever seen them, like in a, like when you open up your refrigerator, maybe a light goes on, yeah, so there's yeah. one in there. How about a night light? Have you ever seen a night light? Yeah. Yes. I have a night light. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. You have different kinds of night lights. Okay. When you know how to wake up, when to wake up because of that. So Christmas tree lights, there's so many different kinds of lights. So what do you think, and I know Noah said a little bit about this, what do you think makes a light shine? Electricity. So like what kind of light are you talking about? Like how does the light, can it produce some light bulbs? Yeah, there's different... Like electricity, different power sources, friction, okay, battery, so many different ways that we can, solar power, yeah, it's a type of, of uh, battery to produce light, there is, yeah, well, yeah sun, for sure, because that's like how we have like solar power, solar battery from that. Well, fire produces light, but as far as the bulb goes, that's usually a, a, a maybe a different energy source. I don't know. I'm not. I, I don't know all the different ways, but um, but you've named a number of them, and they're all a power source, right? <laughs> well, you think about that, Luna. We'll talk more about it in a little bit. Okay, well, we'll talk about that some more in a little bit. So our lesson today, what, I'm sorry, Chloe, what? Electricity, that is a really big word. Yes, a lot of times it's electricity of some sort or a battery. So in our, in our reading today from Corinthians, um, we hear about a light shining in the darkness, a light shining in the darkness. And in that reading, Paul says that people are like lights. People are like lights. So do we look like we're shining like a light? Yeah. <laughs> yes, no, maybe. Okay. Our, yeah. So if you could see inside of us, would we be shining like a light? Yeah, we'd be shining um, happiness. We'd be shining happiness. So yeah, maybe not like exactly like a light bulb would shine light, but our hearts would shine, right? Our hearts would shine. And let's talk about the power source for that. What do you think the power source is for that light inside of us? Love. God's love. God's love and happiness. And that love and happiness helps us to shine that out, right? So, but let me ask you this. So I have a, one more question for you before we share a prayer. So what I want to know is, will this light bulb 
fit in here? No. no. Why? It's too big. So this light bulb has a specific thing that it does, right? It goes into, yeah. like, most of this goes into a lamp or maybe a ceiling light. So, so what about this? So this is a, probably a smaller light bulb in here. Yeah, it's usually pretty, pretty small. Okay. Yeah, kitties do love to chase, chase lights. So, so we have, yeah, so in here is a very small light bulb, and there's batteries are the power source in here. So let's, let me finish here. Okay, so like, like these different light bulbs and sources of light, we all shine in different ways too, right? We all have different ways that we shine God's love out to the world and to others. And that love is that power source coming from God that we share with others, right? That love helps us to shine. So shall we say a prayer? Okay, let's share an echo prayer. And I invite you to repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for your love. Thank you for Jesus, the light of the world. Help us to shine our light and show your love to others. And all God's people say, Amen. Thank you. Also, I invite you to come on into the chapel for some activities. All right. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, kids. As they head off to uh, chapel time. This is our first Sunday, so just a little public service announcement. It's communion, so if you're in the sanctuary with me, make sure you have your elements with you in the pew, the bread and juice. For those of us, those of you joining us on the stream, have your bread and juice ready. At, at the end of this, near the end of the service, we're going to be celebrating God's love as we partake in communion together. Well, I'll um, never forget Danielle. Um, I first met Danielle, who went by the name Danny, when she was brought into the hospital where I was doing my student chaplaincy. So I went to seminary down in Illinois, northern Illinois, and before you could graduate seminary, you had to do a rotation in the hospital as a chaplain, which I did for four months. And Danny was admitted to Unit 3, which is the detox unit for drugs and alcohol. And when I went into her room, she was rather guarded, but we developed a relationship over time. She seemed genuinely interested in changing her life, cha making a different, different choices in her life. But her boyfriend was a different story. He would have none of it. He showed up at the hospital to take her home, and by the smell of alcohol in his breath, I knew that the change that she wanted to make would be quickly muffled as he would maneuver her back into old habits. I talked with her about what it meant to make some positive changes, what the resources were, um, the people that are out there that could, that could help her. But it didn't take. In time, she would become, in my four months that I was there as a student chaplain, she would become a regular patient in Unit 3 as she was continually picked up and brought in for detox. In time, her spirit sagged to where I just really couldn't reach her, to where I don't think she really even believed in herself to where change just moved further and further and further away. There's a teaching that Jesus gives about this in the Gospel of Matthew, and it reads, Neither is new wine put into old wineskins, otherwise the skin bursts and the wine is spilled. So I think about that scripture and how Danny tried to put her new life, her new wine, using Jesus' metaphor, um, his analogy, into an old lifestyle. And you know what? It just never works. The new life is always lost. Because what is needed is change. A new life. A new normal. Now we're familiar with that phrase, right? It's not an old phrase, but it's a phrase we used a lot during the pandemic days, right? We talked about our, our new normal. And what the phrase meant was that we needed to accept the new reality we were in. We needed to accept the change that had happened 
during those days of the pandemic when everything was shut down and we had to change how we acted and behaved and all that and we were said to our to each other this is our new normal we had to accept the reality of the change but we have new normals all the time not just a pandemic you know when you move that's a new normal you get a different job that's a new normal you have to establish when you lose someone that's a new normal you know when you retire that's a new normal that we do um, there's a passage in scripture that talks about this new normal although it doesn't use that 21st century phrase it's our reading from second corinthians um, from paul and paul writes these words to the church in corinth we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying around in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For we who are living are always being handed over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may always be made visible in our mortal flesh. So Paul doesn't really mince words here. He uses these words like afflicted and perplexed and persecuted and crushed. Um, and he's not promising here that if we just give our hearts to Jesus, right? If we just give our hearts to Jesus, that every good thing is going to come drifting down to us like manna from heaven. That we're never going to go through any pain or, or difficulty or heartache ever again. That's not the promises being made that there'll never be any change that will happen or any need for change. Kate Bowler, who is a professor at Duke Divinity School, um, is a survivor of colon cancer, a very insidious cancer. This young mother of three was diagnosed with this cancer at the age of 35, and she was given just a few months to live. Well, I'm happy to report she is alive today, um, sharing her faith, sharing how her faith and how her life were changed from this experience that she went through. So she often shares words from Anthony of the Desert. Anthony was one of those monks from Egypt who are very famous of the early monastics, of the early church fathers who were in the desert uh, giving these wise words. Well, this monk was, um, was um, asked a question, you know, what do we need to do to please God? And so to answer it, he replied with this piece of advice. He said, wherever you go, keep God in mind. Whatever you do, follow the example of Scripture. Wherever you are, do not move away in a hurry, but do so deliberately, always walking in faith. So Kate comments, what I, what I hear in these instructions is to try to eliminate double-mindedness. As so often, we try to live in the past and the present. Or we live worried about the future and the present. Be where you are. You don't have to be extra, extra holy. You simply have to be mindful of where you are and, and the and is important, keep God in mind. Be where you are and keep God in mind. Wise words to live by. In fact, they're words that should become our new normal, right? Because we do have a new life through Christ. That's one of the promises we receive. As we grow in our faith, we're constantly changing. We're constantly embracing the new life in Christ that's in front of us. But it doesn't mean anything if that new life is dumped back into the old wineskins, the old lifestyle filled with activities and behavior, filled with choices that pull us off this path to the abundant life being freely offered to us. Paul goes on to write, we have this treasure in clay jars. In other words, we are those clay jars, right? We are those fragile clay jars, but God loves that. God loves, all throughout Scripture, God loves to use ordinary clay pots. But God is always using the ordinary, molding and shaping us for a greater use, using everything in our lives, the good, the bad, the beautiful, the ugly, to shape us into people of compassion, of hope, of grace, of mercy. God wants us, desires for us, yearns for us, is begging for us to become beautiful, useful vessels. But sometimes things go wrong. Sometimes we go astray. 
Sometimes it's because of, you know, choices that we've made. Sometimes, like Danny, who, who I met, it's because of habits and behavior patterns that overwhelm us. Sometimes it's our priorities, but regardless of the reasons, when we turn to God, when we open our hearts and our souls and earnestly yearn to grow deeper in our faith, we find God is already at work reshaping, remaking, renewing us. Paul goes on to say in our reading that as we grow in our faith, as we grow in this faith, as we embrace this new normal that God is giving to us, that light will shine out of darkness. And so this divine light of love that opens our eyes and our hearts to see the world with God's eyes, not our eyes, but to see with God's eyes, to see beyond our fears, to see beyond our worries, to see past the outward and to see the heart of another person as a fellow child of God. For it's our calling and our duty to not see through one another, but to see one another through, to be a people of faith, of patience, of compassion, voices of calm in the midst of anxiety, lights for our world, so that in what we do and in what we say, we share some hope and light and we push back the darkness. This is our new normal. So let me tell you about a couple people. So the first is Isabel. Isabel is a, a mission worker. She works in a city that's called Moy Plaz. It's a city outside of Pretoria, South Africa. And I promise you it's like a city you've never experienced because Moy Plaz is built literally on top of the city dump. It actually is the city dump. It's an actively working dump where garbage is constantly being brought there all the time. In the midst of these piles of garbage, there are shacks all throughout it. And in this active dump, there are 16,000 people that live there. No electricity, water surrounded by garbage piles, living in shacks made from the materials they scavenge from the piles of garbage. There's only one permanent brick building in the entire place. It was an abandoned dairy, rehabbed into a school. It can probably fit about 100 to 150 people, but they regularly put in 300 children. And in that place, they hear about God, they get a meal, and that's their health clinic as well to get inoculations. And the woman who runs that school, her name is Isabel, and she's a social worker. And she came there about seven years ago, and she drives in every single day to be with these children, to be with their families, to be with the people in this city. She talks about how at the age of 15, she experienced a calling from God in her life to do something bigger, and how she couldn't imagine doing anything else but driving into the city built on a garbage dump to be a light bearer sharing hope with these kids and doing what she can every single day she's blessed to do it to push back the darkness where she finds it because this has become her new normal but of course not everybody feels a call to a mission like that that's a big mission uh, right so let me tell you about someone else barbara glanz is a, a speaker um, and an author and one time she was researching a book and the topic of the book was on how you live a, a vital faith, how you put your faith into action. And so she got a phone call from a young man named Johnny. He worked at a beggar in a grocery store, um, kind of wondering what he could do. And so he said, you know, I love sayings. I love inspirational sayings, inspirational quotes, inspirational thoughts. And so I thought maybe I could pick out my favorites and we could print them out on the computer. I can cut them up into little strips and I'll put them in, in people's bags um, and just say, you know, I hope you enjoy my quote for the day. And the result was amazing. Within a few weeks, the line at the grocery store for Johnny, to, as the bagger, was like five times as long as other lines. Like, there would be open registers and nobody would go to them. They would all line up because they all wanted to see what the quote of the day was from Johnny. There was one woman who said, I don't even need to shop this much, but I just want to see the quote. So she would go get whatever just to see the quote. Well, Barbara later wrote about this experience of Johnny the beggar and what he did and the experience in that store. And she said, I realize an important lesson through Johnny the beggar 
that touching lives isn't just about what we do. It's about the heart behind it. A heart that is filled with faith and love will transform giving a cup of cold water, as Jesus says to us, or giving a smile, or just picking out a quote into the holiest of moments. Because that's what it means to be a light bearer, and this needs to be our new normal. This heart of faith needs to be our new normal. So yes, I say to you, life is uncertain. Life is scary. Life is filled with ups and downs, good and bad times, but through it all, God is with us. And so we need to stand on faith. We're not to give up. We're not to give in, no matter what we may be going through, no matter how afflicted we are, perplexed we are, how crushed we feel. So here's the takeaways for today. Here's two. The first is, wherever you are, keep God in mind. Because we may be ordinary clay jars, as Scripture says, but we have an amazing treasure that we need to nurture as we stay focused on growing in our faith. Growing in our faith through prayer, right? Regular prayer. Make time in the day for regular prayer. It doesn't have to be fancy. Take time to to talk to God. Take time to listen for where God is speaking to you. Take time at the end of the day to think about where did I see God today? How has God moved in my life? Be a part of a small group, and we offer those opportunities, hoping to offer more worship, regular worship, Bible study. So pick up a devotional today. They're here at the, at the church here. Pick them up today. And the second thing is we need to share this treasure, right? It doesn't do any good to hoard it. It doesn't do any good to, to dampen our light. We need to share this treasure as we continue to practice those ways where we let our light shine to lovingly push back the darkness as we're with people who are hungry and those who are poor and those who are struggling or whatever situation they may be in. um, For we have a mission. We have a mission, a calling, to let God's love and light be felt by every person that we encounter. So every person you're going to encounter today and you're going to encounter this week, you have a choice in the words that you are going to speak and the way that you are going to act And our most important job is to make those choices so that the words we're speaking, the actions we're doing, reflect this light of love. Love to the hurting people. Love for our broken world. That we bless others, even and especially, and this is the hard part of it, even and especially those who may never love us back. They may not even like us. And yet we are called to still pray for them, to still love them. We are called to bind up the hurts of this world as we live out our faith. Let it have influence on the people that are there in our path. And we can do this no matter, no no matter what we do, no matter what we're involved in, whether we work, whether we're retired, doesn't matter at all. No matter our age, doesn't matter at all. All of us can do this because it just needs to become normal for us. This needs to be our normal. That it's just normal that we are just going to share the light and the love of Jesus Christ with our world in any way that we can. And so we acknowledge today, like Paul, that we may at times be afflicted, we may be perplexed, we may be struck down, we may feel like we are crushed, but that is never the end of the story. There's always a new day. There's always a new life for us because we are a resurrection people. Out of death comes life, and there's still joy to be found, hope to be cherished, and a resurrection faith that always sustains and always strengthens us. That, my friends, is our new normal. May it be so. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand for our hymn of response as we sing 2216 when we are called to sing your praise.
Amen. You may be seated. So let us come to offer our praises as we come to be a people of prayer, to lift up our joys, our concerns for those of us joining us on the stream. And um, it looks like from reading the comments, some people have had a little issue getting connected, but it looks like everybody is now. But if you're with us on our stream, I invite you to use the comment section to put in any joys or concerns or prayers you have. Um, and I will share some from this morning's service and ones we've been persistently praying for and then open it up to all of you who are here to offer up any prayers you have this day, any joys, any concerns that you have um, as well. Um, so I'll start with one online. It's from Mary, Mary Schultz. She says, good morning from Milwaukee. Uh, congratulations to Annie and Mary Kalanji, who are still back there, <laughs> um, for their awards at Madison School. Also, Noah uh, Jerebek, who's also back there, <laughs> um, for also being recognized for his accomplishments at Madison School. So one of the great joys of a pastor is I get calls and they say, hey, there's an award ceremony going on. Come to the school. Well, I went, Audra and I went to Madison and we got to see them all getting these awards at the end of the day. So, um, uh, so they all got, so I know that Annie was one of the Madison Mustangs, the Mustang Award. Um, and what that's a very prestigious award because you get your name printed on a banner and the banner gets hung in the cafeteria and it stays there forever. And I know that because I saw so many of your children, in fact, I saw Taylin, her name, right there on the banner. And so Annie's going to get her name printed on this banner and it will be there forever <laughs> to the end of time. So it's quite a great thing. So congratulations to Annie, to Mary, to Noah. So go give them a big Congratulations. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so that's a great joy. Great joy. All right. Um, some other people we've been praying for. We've been uh, praying for Jim Ford, for healing, for him, for Bruce, for healing. Uh, we've been praying for Larry's brother for continued healing. Um, I received an email from, from Scott who had some knee surgery, and he said, um, it was an email of thanks. He said, thank you so much for everybody here for your prayers. It has meant the world to him. He said, I've had some complications, but I'm doing better with a catheter. I'm so blessed to have a community like St. Paul's. So continue to pray for Scott. Continue to pray for healing um, for him. Also, um, prayers for Kristen, who works in our office um, as our... Uh, communications director or administrative assistant. Um, Kristen, as you know, has been asking for prayers for her gums. She's had some pretty serious um, issues with her gums, some dental issues. Well, her first of two surgeries is, is this Thursday. So she has two surgeries coming up, this Thursday and the next Thursday. So she would appreciate your support, your prayers, as she um, goes through that. And then also prayers for her fiancé, Mike, um, who undergo, underwent a serious lifestyle change after his heart surgery and needs strength to keep on course. So let's keep them in our prayers. And then, of course, we pray for all those uh, areas of our world suffering with violence, our persistent prayer of peace for places like Israel, for Gaza, for the Ukraine, for Congo, and all other areas with violence. We pray for peace, and we pray for those who are working for peace. All right. How about for those of you that are here in person, what joys, what concerns, and John's going to come give you a mic so we can hear you and those watching can hear you. I have two things. The first thing I would like to do is thank the few people who came yesterday to help with the yard work at the church. We got the north and south entrances cleared, so we're happy with that, but we still have more work to do. The second thing is for Jean Hayden, who's having surgery in Appleton on Tuesday. She's having knee surgery. Hopefully that will correct the issue and give her more mobility. So we pray for a good surgery and good healing. And because of that, I think we need prayers also for Harv. He's the caregiver and has to deal with her. So <laughs> prayers for them both. <laughs> All right. So prayers for Jean as she undergoes surgery, prayers for Harv who's caring for her, and a prayer of joy for those of you who showed up yesterday to do cleaning. It wasn't the best of days. It rained. <laughs> so uh, more work to do. Stay tuned. <laughs> we'll have another work day. Yeah. Prayers from my grandson, Jacob, who has a really strange virus right now and is having 
difficulty even eating because it's very painful. I think he's mm -hmm. on the mend now, so that's good. Also, continued prayers for his dad, Mark, who had his second back surgery but is doing better, and for Janice, who has to put up with both of them. So <laughs> her patience is um, waning. <laughs> so for both of them with their medical issues, we pray, and for the caregivers. Prayers for a friend of our family, Ali, and his family. Um, they are in uh, Rajasthan in the, the desert out, uh, in northern India. Um, and indeed, for, for everyone in India and really South Asia, they've been having a truly terrible heat wave. Um, and in an area where a very large portion of the people have to work outside or they don't eat. Um, this has already been a, a deadly heat wave and it's getting a little better but still like daily highs of you know 110, 115 degrees, nights still up in the 90s. So um, it's, it's really rough in that area right now. Yeah. All right. We pray for them in, in that area. We have some joys this morning. My wonderful husband will celebrate a milestone birthday tomorrow. And on Thursday, we will celebrate 54 years of marriage. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> yeah. I have a joy this morning. Um, I have two brothers that will be coming from Florida. They started out Friday with their wives. The one I haven't seen in years. And so my sister-in-law to the other one uh, that winters back and forth, she has just come out of rehab. So it will take them two or three days. So if they're not here today, they will be here tomorrow morning, probably. Thank you. All right, great joy of family. I just wanted to share joys. Um, not only you mentioned Mary and Annie's awards and Noah's awards, but um, it's been a year now since our family has been here. Time mm -hmm. goes quickly, and yep. they've made such progress, and Jane can be very, very proud of herself and all her children. But furthermore, Aunt, or Mary has a birthday today. Yes. Yes. She turned 11, so hey, say happy birthday, Jane. All right. Today. All right, so it's Mary's birthday. So yeah, so it's been one year since Jane and her, yeah. <laughs> since Jane and her beautiful family came from the Congo by way of Zimbabwe <laughs> um, to be here with us. We're so thrilled. They've come a long way. Um, and so such great accomplishments. And so yes, so Mary is, her birthday is today. So there you go. You got a lot to talk to those kids back there about. <laughs> a lot of stuff. Yeah, John. I'd ask for prayers for my sister-in-law. She's in hospice care, a long battle with cancer, and also prayers for her family as they deal with this situation. All right. We pray for your sister-in-law in the midst of her hospice. Other uh, prayers this morning, other joys or concerns? All right. I don't see any other online. Um, so for all these that are named and those many, many more that are just within our hearts, I invite us to come. Let this be bound together. Let's be in prayer. O God of love and light, be with us, we pray, in the midst of any change we go through or stress or struggle. Help us to recognize the new normal, the foundation that you provide for us as you always walk with us. As we keep our focus on you, we pray. For you are always loving us, always calling us to be more than we are to be your lights to this world. And so we come this day truly praising you. We want to, as we celebrate with those who are having birthdays and anniversaries, as we give thanks for family and friends that journey with us, our church family that prays for us, as we give thanks for this, this beautiful world that is a great gift to us that we are stewards of, and of course, for our faith in Jesus Christ, that is that foundation, that, that new normal that allows us to move forward in life. For all these, we give praise. 
But, oh God, we come this morning and we know that we are as fragile as clay jars, and our world is as fragile as a clay jar. But yet we have this amazing treasure of hope, and so we want to pray for those who are feeling a bit fragile right now, for all those that are struggling with medical issues, those that have um, undergone surgery and are recovering, those who will be facing surgery, we pray for them. Um, for those that are undergoing treatment for cancer or other illnesses, oh Lord, we pray for your healing presence to surround them this day. We want to pray for those who've heard your call to be in a healing ministry, those doctors and nurses and therapists. Give them wisdom and skill. We want to pray for those who are grieving losses this day. Oh Lord, comfort them day by day as they establish their new normal. May they hear your word and feel your comfort and assurance. Oh Lord, we pray for all those who are struggling, whether it be mental illness or addiction or in poverty. Oh Lord, guide them, lead them to places of recovery. Open our eyes and hands that we continue to hear their call and reach out. Oh Lord, we pray for those areas of our world that are dealing with famine and with heat waves and with drought. We pray for those areas of our world that are experiencing violence. Oh, Lord, we just pray for your spirit of peace to be with all of them. We want to pray for all those that are working for peace in this world. Oh, Lord, give us courage to follow you each day of our lives into the new normal of grace and of mercy, of humility. Use our casual conversations and our conduct to bring your word of healing and hope to show what love and peace really look like. Oh, Lord, we lift up all these prayers, those that are spoken, those in our hearts, those in the sanctuary, those that are being prayed for right now, wherever people are watching our stream. We lift them all up in the name of the one who is the Word made flesh, the light of the world. Come to guide us in the ways of hope and peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, hear our prayers. Amen. And so as a blessed people in large and small ways, this is our opportunity to give back to recognize how blessed we are and give back for the mission and ministry of making this love real. So um, if you did not place your offering on the plate as you came in, I invite you to do so as you leave, or you can mail it into the church. Use our website, stevenspointumc.org, and the Give button to do that. I thank you for all the ways you've given. It has made a tremendous difference. It has touched the lives and hearts of so many people. And so for this opportunity, we have to give back. I invite us to pray. O oh God of amazing abundance, there are no limits to the gifts you give us, no limits to your blessings, no limits to your love. We give thanks for this opportunity to make a difference as we share and support our ministries that touch this world, that bring about the new normal of your kingdom of hope and of peace. Help these gifts that we come to give, our time, our talents, our treasures, expand your circle of grace and hope of compassion throughout this community and beyond. Bless our giving and bless our sharing this morning. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And so as we celebrate this new normal of hope and of grace that we are offered freely, this new life we're offered, there's no better way to represent that than with the great gift of celebrating the love of Christ through communion. So I invite you to take your elements, you don't take them yet, but just have them near you, uh, whether you're in the sanctuary, whether you're watching our stream, I invite you to just have the elements with you as we come to bless them and offer this prayer. O holy God of light and love, we come together in this time, in thanksgiving, to follow where you lead, to hear again of the good news of hope as we break bread and as we pray together as a community of faith. We offer thanks for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord who brought light into the world, light that accompanies us through all our nights. We thank you for his life of justice and righteousness, his conquering of death for our sake, and his glorious resurrection. We thank you especially for this holy meal that you gave us, that we might remember his power that redeems us, that forgives us, that offers us new life. As we gather around this table, where all are welcomed and all are received, we remember how Jesus took the bread how he blessed it and broke it and gave it to them and said, Take and eat, for this is my body given for you, so that you will be my body, my hands, my heart, my feet. Do this in remembrance of me. 
And when the supper was finished, he took the cup and he blessed it and he said, drink of this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me as a people of mercy, as a people of humility, as a people of forgiveness. And so, O oh God, pour out your Holy Spirit on wherever we are gathered for worship and on these gifts before us that in the breaking of the bread and the drinking of this cup, we may know the presence of the living Christ in our midst, that we may be renewed as the body of Christ in ministry to the world as we remember and reach out to all those who may be overwhelmed by darkness to help them discover that new normal, that new possibilities, that new hope is always with us. And now in Christ, with Christ, and for Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we offer all honor and glory to you, Almighty God, as we come now to confidently pray to you that prayer that is taught to us when Jesus said, when you gather in my name, lift up these words of prayer. And so would you please pray with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so I invite you to take your bread, wherever you are. The body of Christ given for us. And I invite you to take the cup. The blood of Christ shed for us. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you for this table where all are welcomed, all are received to come and receive this gift of new life, of new hope, of new beginnings, of this new normal that you give to all of us. Oh Lord, fill us. Fill us this day with your spirit of hope and of peace, of compassion, of kindness, of humility, of mercy. Fill us and use us, O oh Lord, as your beautiful, amazing vessels we may be these clay jars, but we have this amazing treasure, this amazing light of hope and love that we come to share. Let us be nourished that we may rise from this table and go forth to truly transform this world one person at a time with all those that we meet. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I want to invite you to stand for our closing hymn this morning. As a fire is meant for burning, hymn number 2237. Yeah. 
So before I give our closing words, just one announcement. Um, it's annual conference season, so I will be gone along with Laura and Yvonne, who's representing you at annual conference in Green Bay from Friday to Monday. So I want to thank Tanya, who I don't think is here right now. But anyway, Tanya's filling in for me. She's at the Welcome Center table. I just wanted to say thank you to her for leading while I will be gone. And pray for us as we're at annual conference. So let us go forward, claimed and shaped and guided by the love of God that is as constant as the waves of the shoreline, with blessings as faithful as the stars of the night, with joys exuberant as the swirling wind, whose care is as gentle as an evening prayer, who calls us to risk and dream and boldly live out our faith as signs of compassion, as beacons of joy, that we may fill this world with hope. May the peace that passes all understanding be with us this day and every day. Go in peace, friends. Amen, as we close our service with our postlude.